My voice is loud. My heart is louder. My hope sometimes drops to a whisper, a muffled breath, and I am once again reminded, loud does not mean heard. My heartbeat is the beatbox hip-hop R&B song reminding me to move my body on rhythm when the hatred violates my soul into a rigid state. It's a strength that enables me to rise from the pain, rise up from the parts of myself and others left and lay down in graves. Rise from summer of fifth grade, sometimes in my head on replay, my golden brown skin simply existing in the driveway was too loud and too black and not enough slave for the middle-aged white man who called me nigger. Didn't see the sunshine in my face or the childhood bliss in my eyes, but he saw all this brownness and boldness didn't know its place. Made me realize that in this body, I would always be an entity to hate that this much brown and this loud mouth would be too much for some to take. Rise from every time I walk through my school and hear remixes of that same day over and over and over again, like a scratchy D disc skipping, nigga, 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 nigga. And it's like, I knew I was out of place before, but in those seconds, I'm squirming out of this brown body, holding back the rage, wondering if I should say anything at all because they'll say MT sorry's now, rewind and press play the next day. Go their whole lives not knowing all the ways they made my hope dissipate. Made me feel like a foreigner in my own body, a criminal for embodying this brown skin. Go their whole lives not knowing that racist tendencies are not always segregation and slavery on cotton field plantations, but it is so often the subtle things that create an unconscious isolation of people who do not look like you. But it's nothing new. I was always the black kid in class, sometimes one of few. I can remember all the slave jokes, the times I felt alone. I remember the stares, the expectations, the overload of stereotypes, the lack of black books, black representation, black education. I mostly saw people who looked like me in nooses, as slaves, as sacrifices for others, as their color, never seen as someone's sister, mother, father, brother. Only really seen positive representation of a few black heroes. MLK, Rosa Parks, maybe a few more in Black History Month rolled around, but we never really acknowledged even some of the hundreds of icons who allow all of us to live the way we do now. And so I'll rise for the mixed girl who saw so little of herself, her blackness followed her around like a shadow, waiting to be recognized as beautiful and in slips of light she was actually visible. I rise from the realization that being a person of color seems to come with an unwanted ticket to a lifetime of trauma. My friends of color and I whisper of these tragedies so often and so carefully that we know no amount of fake apologies and therapy could restore all of us that's been misplaced. The PTSD of knowing that so often safety and brown skin cannot even be in the same sentence, that validation and brown skin cannot even be in the same sentence, that important and brown skin cannot even be in the same sentence, cannot even be mentioned, because the others, these ones simply translate to sensitivity, to exaggeration, to the phrases, racism doesn't exist now, let it go, slavery was years ago, you people are always complaining about something, you black women are always mad. And so I'll rise for the days I have to prove my worth, for the days I've been told I don't count, that I need to be less civil rights movement, more sit pretty and close my mouth, for being told mixed girls' opinions don't matter because I'm not black enough, I'm too light-skinned to know about any of this racism stuff, and how I talk about racism like I've actually known the pain. Well, because I have. To live in the body of a contradiction is to feel the crack of the whip from all sides, to feel a lack of belonging, sometimes impossible to explain. And so I rise. Rise from the time he said my afro made me look like I'm going back in time so much, soon enough I'd be a slave. Rise for all the black friends who moved schools because they couldn't take the hate. Rise for the fact that every black friend I've ever had can remember when they were called the N-word, yet even through shouts, their stories and their pain remains unheard. So I rise, rise for my trans friends who are misgendered every single day, threatened and told they're, and threatened until they're afraid, told to kill themselves as if people only value life if it's lived in a certain way. I rise for my Hispanic, Latinx, Mexican friends who are named beaners, wetbacks, aliens, told to get out of this country as if America wasn't built on the blood, sweat, and tears of immigrants. I rise for my Native American friends who are only remembered in the pages of history books with half-truths, but forgotten the next, forgotten when Columbus Day rolls around, forgotten when we lie about how America was found, forgotten every time we don't acknowledge how we stand on stolen land. So I rise for the couples, for the people beaten, killed, and harassed for simply being gay, I rise for the Middle Easterns, for the Muslims addressed as terrorists before their names. I rise for the women still degraded to their shape, still getting paid less, valued less, treated as less, despite all the progress. I rise for the men told to grow a pair, to never shed a tear, to hold in their emotions and fears because they're taught to be a man is to not be a woman. I rise for the students who feel unsafe, who feel afraid, who feel like today is going to be the day because schools have become less of a safe space and more violence and hatred takes place. For those who don't feel like they matter, because 
We enter school as kids and we leave as statistics, as test scores, as numbers, and so I rise for everyone, for those who don't feel like they have a voice, for more people than identities not named in this poem because we all deserve to have our stories spoken, to have people who care, who speak up and take these stories beyond right now, beyond today, let it be the reason they help someone else feel safe. And so I rise. I will keep my voice loud and steady, grab onto it even when it shakes. I will keep my heart loud and steady even when it wants to break. I will pick up my hope, I will feel the pulse of my heartbeat and let it be the reason I continue to breathe when I am paralyzed by hate. I have realized I am not what happens to me, I am what I do about it, I am what I say about it, I am how I speak about it. I rise from the ashes of the parts of myself and others they try to destroy and I want you to rise. Rise for those who look like you, for those who don't. Rise from the times you felt alone. Rise from your hardest moments, the times you felt broken. Rise from the stereotypes. Rise from what society thinks is right. Rise from the complacency. Rise from the mob mentality. Rise from the fear. Rise from the 11-year-old me with a broken heart. Rise for the innocent bodies robbed of life. Rise for those who don't yet know they need someone to rise for them. Rise for the past, for the future, for now. Rise above, rise above, rise above, rise up. Hold out your hand and open your heart to the world. Rise to keep someone else from falling. Thank you, guys.